Hey guys, my name is Shy, and this is a pick a card reading that is really more a pick a light code reading or a pick a spiritual activation reading if you would prefer to think about it that way. So you are more than welcome to pick the beam of light that you see on your screen. Pick, pick the beam of light that is drawing you in that seems to have the light codes or the activation for you. If you would prefer to see the cards and pick from the cards, those will be up on the screen in a moment. There's also, also a timestamp down below to skip straight to that. For this reading, I'm using the deck I channeled myself. Each and every one of these cards you could take them just as a message that you are meant to hear right now, something for you to hear, but I really feel the deeper spiritual purpose of these cards and this reading is to bring you the light codes that are essentially connected to these cards, right? Connected to these cards. There's a, there's a simple, you know, one or two sentence message on each one of these cards and you can take it at face value and leave it at that, but each one of them essentially if you choose to go down the rabbit hole, it will open up and unfold inside of you an entire cascade of activations and experiences that are meant to evolve and expand your consciousness. That's what this is really about. And I'm going to be, of course, explaining, describing a little bit, whatever. I don't know what messages are coming out, but I'm going to be describing what they mean to me and how I feel these light codes kind of unpack and evolve. Um, but of course, my biggest intention with these messages is for you to go on your own personal journey with them. So whatever they mean to you, and however the general theme, the light codes, however that unfolds for you over the next week or so is going to be deeply personal and unique to you. And it will be whatever it is meant to be for you. So I will let you pick your message and I will see you in your reading. For those of you who are here picking from the cards themselves, just to clarify, we have cards number one, two, three, four, five, and six, seven, eight, and nine. All right, light code number one. Let's see what wants to come through for you guys. Uh, this is so perfect for number one. Everything exists as a thought slash idea before it can exist as a visual. Everything exists as a visual before it can materialize in the physical. So this is how I see the path of manifestation or the path of materialization. This is everything from materializing that cup of coffee <laughs> that you want right now, all the way up into how did you get your consciousness into this physical body on this physical planet, <laughs> right? So this is really helping you see the interdimensional and like vertical process of creation, how you yourself existed as a thought <laughs> before you materialized yourself in, like as a light body, as a light being, right? You're, you were just a thought, just an idea. And of course, when you're thinking about a thought and idea, we're talking about like a cosmic thought, a cosmic idea, however you can imagine source itself thinking or the void itself thinking. It's like you were conceived first as an idea and then you existed as some kind of being made of light, right? Like a, a blob of energy out in the universe. And then you spiraled down to materialize into the physical, into the physical. And when you create things, when you manifest anything in your physical life, it follows that same process, right? Uh, actually, <laughs> this card means a lot to me because this is how I created this deck. I thought about it first. I just had had an idea. Every single one of these messages I channeled to begin with. It was an idea that I received from the universe. And then I wrote it down in my journal. <laughs> and then I 
put it into the computer and then I created some art to go on the background and then I sent it to the printer and the printing company materialized it, gave birth to it in the physical and sent it to me and here it is. Now it's back in digital form being transmitted out to you guys. So it's this really interesting process of creation. So you're essentially invited to think about that, right? Maybe you guys are thinking about manifestation and materialization in your life and just keep following the path, right? First you have an idea and then you can visualize the idea and then you take these steps. And so I feel for each of you, you're going to start to recognize what step is kind of the missing link, right? When you're trying to materialize something, what step is the missing link for you? This is going to be different for everybody. For me, I like, I'm really good at coming up with ideas and I can like write things down. I could put things into words, but I really struggle to create, to actually get it into the physical. It's that process of printing it, right? So for me with creating this deck, I like hired a printer, right? I sent it off to somebody else who's really good at printing things. And I mean, literally printing things onto physical pieces of paper. And I just needed to co-create with them because how was I going to print this myself, right? I thought about it and was like, that's too much for me. <laughs> I'm going to co-create with someone else and have them actually do the printing process. So for me, like it's the, the missing link is actually the last step of inserting it into the physical. But for other people, it could be um, maybe getting really like clarifying the idea to begin with. Maybe you're really good at materializing things into the physical, but maybe you're always materializing other people's ideas. Maybe you struggle to really clarify your own idea. It's not that you don't have ideas. It's that maybe y y you struggle to actually clarify your idea to actually visualize what you want to create, right? Instead of just using other people's ideas, or maybe you get an idea, but then you can't figure out exactly what you want it to look like in the physical. So everybody has this different missing link and you're going to go on through a process of realizing what your own missing link is in the materialization process and then once you know what the missing link is you'll be able to take steps to kind of fill that in and you, with this guys just keep taking one baby step at a time it's just one step one step one step one baby step one foot after the other until it ultimately finally clicks into place exactly like a baby being born which will happen outside of your control <laughs> this will materialize whenever it is meant to so Card number one, that is your messages. Light code number two, what wants to come through for you guys? All right, we come together in love after we learn what it means to stand alone. So this can be playing out many different ways. Maybe some of you watching this are going through a breakup. Maybe some of you have been for alone a long time. Maybe for some of you, this isn't really on a human level. This is more on a cosmic level where sometimes you feel like you're alone in the entire universe or why do I have to do everything by myself? Why do I always have to be the one to do it, right? Those kind of feelings of having to stand alone. And this can be interpersonal or quite cosmic and big picture in your life. This is really important uh, to understand, to make sense of your journey of solitude. You've essentially had some kind of initiation of solitude. And that's interesting. If you resonate as walking like the high priestess path, like the priestess path, that's a phrase I like to use sometimes, the priestess path, because um, many of you will have had past lives. I would say basically all of you watch who really resonate with me and watch my channel a lot, right? will have had past lives where you were a priest or a priestess or some kind of spiritual leader, practitioner, you know, pick your words, whatever. You've had many of those past lives. And in those past lives, you've had these initiations where you worked with others in your collective, in your, in your spiritual community, where you like worked as a group to essentially become the spiritual leader that you were. But in this life, right, in this life, you're going on that journey alone. You're going on that journey alone. And it's interesting in many different spiritual traditions to actually become like fully, fully initiated, like to become the priestess or the shaman or whatever it is, right? To have that graduation day to actually level up and become the full practitioner in your spirit, in that spiritual tradition. There's often this, um, initiation of solitude where you have to go out into the unknown into the wild alone right the final journey the final initiation the final graduation process the final exam has to be done alone right it is done alone you walk out into the unknown you walk out into the wilderness alone and it's up to you to use your own personal skills and wisdom and intuition to find your way back right 
This is very common in many different spiritual traditions. And that is essentially what you're going through in this life, right? But in this life, since you're a modern human, especially most of you living in developed countries, right? Um, where life is very modernized and all of that. Uh, your life doesn't necessarily look like you're walking a spiritual path on the day-to-day -day life, right? Your life looks like all kinds of weirdness and crazy. But know that when you have this, these experiences of walking in solitude, it is because that is a deep spiritual initiation. And that can go on for years where you're being thrown out into the unknown and you have to use your own wisdom, skills, and intuition to navigate yourself back. You're walking the priestess path or the shaman path or the spiritual path. Pick, pick your words, right? Um, but when, when, when you're done, when you're done walking the path of solitude, that's when you reunite in love. And this can be reuniting in love with a romantic partner or with your soul tribe, with your community, or finally feeling supported by the universe and realizing that you're not alone, right? Realizing that you were never alone. You were just having this initiation of solitude. That is a very important part of your spiritual path and that it doesn't last forever. It is like, think of a, I think a really good example actually is a PhD candidate who is writing their dissertation, right? That That is done mostly alone, <laughs> mostly alone. Sure, they might have advisors um, that can kind of offer some advice and guide the way, but really you're doing the work and you're doing 99.9% .9 of the work all alone, right? And, but then at the end of the day, you know, then you graduate and you get your PhD and then you're off to go become a professor. So that, that's a really good analogy. That's what you're doing. And know that you will reunite in love after you learn what it means to stand alone, right? You're, you're building the strength within yourself. You're walking your solitary path and then you will, it's absolutely, it's part of the cycle, part of the, part of the process where you, you will be reunited in love. And you, the thing is you'll be so much stronger and the love will be better, especially for those of you where this plays out romantically, right? This is like when this process is done, Maybe before you struggled to have healthy romantic relationships because there was kind of a level of codependency or neediness, right? Where both people, you were together because you needed something from the other one. Um, but once you learn to stand alone, you will come together in love with someone else who has also learned to stand alone. And then when you get together, you are together only because you want each other. There is no neediness. There is no codependency. You, you choose to be together because you want to be in each other's lives and you love each other and that is it, right? And that makes the relationship, <laughs> the relationship that you actually want and it's so much stronger. And of course the same thing applies for however this is playing out for you, right? When you come back together in love with whatever, with, with the other energy, it will be completely transformed because all of the individual parts will be so much stronger, right? Because they have learned the strength from standing alone. Light code number three. Let's find out what is up for you guys. The color of the light you shine changes the colors of the things you see in front of you. All right, this is really cool because this lets you know that how you see the world and how you experience the world, what kind of vibe you perceive when you look out at the world, is largely dependent on your own mindset, on your own light. And you can really change any situation. You can improve any situation if you essentially just change the color of the light you shine, right? Like an easy analogy here is if you wake up and you're really cranky and you're really miserable and you go out into the world and you have like that glass half, like half empty mentality and you're just kind of really negative, well then everything you see that day is gonna seem negative and you're gonna see things negatively, right? And you're going to just like find reasons to continue to be negative. And it's this downward spiral of negativity. But the same thing also applies if you wake up in the morning and you're like, okay, I'm going to find the positive. I'm going to like find that the glass is not half empty. The glass is half full. And you go out there and you're like, I'm going to be positive. I'm going to be optimistic. I'm going to look for reasons to smile. I'm going to look for reasons to be happy. I'm going to look for the little things. And that starts to radically shift your experience, right? Radically shift your experience because then you start seeing, you put on the lens of positivity and you start seeing more positive things. And that of course reinforces your positive attitude. 
But interestingly, that's actually the lesser message here. <laughs> that's the lesser message here. There's also like an entirely deeper level to this where you start to realize that everybody is... Uh, how, do, how do I describe this? The simple way of, say, of saying this is just to say that everybody is looking at the world through a different lens, right? Through a different lens, but another way of describing this is to, one that might make less sense, but I think is more accurate, is some people are walking around looking at the world shining a flashlight and they see the world based on what they can see with visible light, right? Other people are walking around and they're shining an infrared light and or like a like a thermal a thermal camera right they're using like a thermal camera to look out at the world and they're seeing stuff based on how hot <laughs> they can see like you know how you can use a thermal camera in darkness and you can see things based on how warm it is right and they can see the shapes that way and you could also use like different types of cameras different types of light frequencies and so everybody is actually looking at things completely differently right and this goes pretty deep because maybe you're sitting here and you look at the world with a very very spiritual lens and maybe sometimes you get frustrated and you go why don't other people see see the things that i see right but then you realize wow they're looking at the same thing you and someone else can be looking at the exactly same thing, but you're shining different colors of light or shining different frequencies or using different flashlights or using different lenses, using different types of cameras, looking at the exact same thing as you, seeing it differently. But the way they're seeing it is also accurate, is also valid. You're looking at the same thing but because you're using different light. I mean, just imagine if you had a red flashlight and you looked at something and it would be red. <laughs> and if someone else had a blue flashlight, they looked at it and they said, no, it's blue. Well, because you're shining different colored light, you're seeing the same thing, but it looks different. But both of them are valid and it's just because you're using different frequencies to look at it. <laughs> so. You'll have to kind of play with this around in your head and see how you can make sense of this because the way I'm describing it is, again, just my way of looking at this. So essentially, everybody is looking at the same thing, just seeing it differently. Every perspective is valid in some way, shape, or form because every perspective is just based on how you're looking at it, <laughs> right? How you're looking at it. And so the, there's two messages here, right? One is to basically decide how do you want to look at things? How do you want to look at it? What kind of light do you want to shine on that? And the kind of light that you put out there, the kind of light that you shine on a situation drastically changes how you perceive it and how you experience it. And then just know that everybody else is doing the same thing. And some people have different kinds of flashlights, have different types of lenses, have different types of cameras, and they're going to look at the same thing and see the same thing, but see it in a completely different way. But really... At the end of the day, it's, it's all the same. All perspectives are just, it's like different filters, right? It's like just on your, on, you know, Instagram, right? You can put a different filter on your picture, but it's still the same picture, right? And at the end of the day, it's all of the same. So you guys are really expanding your perspective and you're really coming, you're like expanding your bubble of non-judgment so that when you think about when you encounter people who disagree with you or who see things differently than you, you really just kind of got to go, oh, I see how they're looking at the same thing as me, but just seeing it in an entirely different way because of the light that they're shining on it, right? And you're going to be like, okay, well, I mean, cool. It's all just the same, right? We're just looking at it with a different kind of light. And you're also going to be gaining a much higher level of control over how you see things, right? You're going to be able to look at something and go, I can look at this in a negative light, or I can look at it in a positive light. Or sometimes it's like I can look at it in a yellow light or a purple light. And it's like it won't even be clear which one is better. But you can just decide what flavor you want to make it. It's like when you're making soup, right? What kind of spices do you want to put in the soup? It changes the flavor. And it's not good or bad. It's just literally what do you prefer? How do you want to see this? So very interesting activation for you guys. Like this is basically... Um, a huge, huge clearing and upgrading of your third eye. If you want to get specific about chakras, right? You, you're, um, I'm literally seeing uh, your third eye used to have like 
one or two or three different facets. It used to be able to look at things from a, like a limited amount of perspectives. And now you're more like a, you know how insects have like so many eyes all in one eye, like a compound eye. So I'm literally seeing your, your third eye used to have like three crystals or three lenses and now it's got like a hundred. You're massively, massively, massively upgrading and expanding your ability to flick through different perspectives and understand other perspectives. So super cool, super interesting for you guys. And <laughs> if you're having third eye headaches, if you're having headaches of any kind or tension in your forehead, wouldn't be surprised <laughs> for you guys. Just mm, drink lots of water, <laughs> drink lots of water. I know that sounds silly, but water will save you. <laughs> water will save you. Drink lots of clear, pure water as much clear pure water as you can get your hands on, I mean, as your body feels like it needs, right? Um, also, if you guys ever like to charge your water with crystals, uh, be careful with that. You can't just put any crystals in water. Some crystals, if you put them in water, you will poison yourself. So please look that up. This is maybe a specific message just for one or two of you who have maybe done that before or, or who have been thinking about it. This is super random, but um, for some of you charging your water with crystals, make sure you can do that double check before you put crystals in water and then drink it, right? Um, that can apparently help at least a few of you, right? Um, with shifting your perspective and clearing and upgrading your third eye. So anyway, that's what I'm seeing for number three here. Light code number four. What's up with you guys? All right. Peace comes after tuning both instruments so that they play harmonious notes. As you can see, lots of green in the background here. This is heart chakra work, guys. Um, you guys are working on meeting in the middle, meeting on the middle. Uh, highly likely that for most of you, this is playing out between you and someone else. For you and a romantic partner, likely, could be you and a family member. Um, if it's not playing out specifically with someone else, then this is really... Um, Harmon like making peace with two halves of yourself even of course it's always inner and outer right internal and external um but some way shape or form you're going to be having experiences in your life where <sighs> it's not exactly about learning to compromise that's not exactly it like that's not exactly it i think when humans talk about compromise that's the easiest way that we can kind of think about this I think you're moving beyond compromise and learning how to actually get on the same page. Uh, not even getting on the same. See my my language, my language. Uh, when it's two, 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 that's balance, 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 right? Harmony, 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 harmony. Um, the English language is not very good at talking about stuff like this. I feel like we're limited to these ideas of compromise or getting on the same page or agreeing. And it's not really about those things, right? Because compromise tends to make most people feel like if you compromise too much, you just end up feeling like you're compromised, right? And getting on the same page, you make it feel that in order to get along with someone, you need to agree with them. And that's not exactly it. Maybe maybe this is how it's been for you before, but you're kind of graduating beyond that and learning to understand that it's not actually about agreeing with someone. It's not actually about even getting on the page, same page with them. And it's not even really about compromising, uh, certainly because you don't really want to compromise yourself. What you actually want to do here is get in harmony, right? Think literally about musical instruments. This is the easiest thing. If you've ever tuned a guitar or, you know, if you're a musician, this is going to be easier for you. But I think most people, even if you don't play any instruments, you've probably seen someone tune a guitar, right? When the guitar is out of tune, you have all these strings and they're all out of tune. And when you strum the guitar, it sounds like crap, right? Or really discordant. It sounds like all the strings are fighting with them. And so to tune the guitar, you don't make all the strings play the same note right? No, you make sure they play harmonious notes. So the E string, right? The E string, you get the E string so that it is perfectly playing a perfectly tuned E. And then the A string, right? You tune the A string so that it is playing a perfectly tuned A. Now you have an E and an A, right? And they're not playing the same note. They're playing different notes, but they are now tuned to themselves. They are tuned to their own note, tuned to their own archetype, right? So this is actually you tuning yourself into your own archetype, you tuning yourself into your own soul. It's like if you're an E string, then you want to make sure that you're playing an E, right? And so if you are you, you want to make sure that your frequency, your vibration is playing you. <laughs> so it's tuning into your own self, right? So 
exactly like tuning a, d a guitar, you wouldn't make the strings play some other note, right? And you wouldn't try to meet them in the middle. No, you, it's about playing the note that you're meant to play, being who you are. <laughs> and so you will find that when you and someone else or two different aspects of yourself, right? Maybe you have an E string and an A string inside of you. When both of those notes or aspects of yourself are playing perfectly in tune with how they are meant to be, now you're playing in harmony, right? And now you can strum the guitar and it will sound beautiful. So yeah, and I just realized how I, how I wrote this, right? I wasn't talking about two different strings, I was talking about two, two, different, two different instruments, right? If you have guitar and a piano, you gotta make sure that <laughs> the guitar and the piano are both tuned, right? Both tuned to the proper frequency, right? Both in tune with themselves first, so that then they can play with other instruments. If you've ever played in a band, if you were in orchestra or band in, in school, right, you know this, every instrument has to be in tune. You have to tune yourself, you have to tune your own instrument so that you can play with the group and then everyone can come together in harmony. So yeah, so in order to find peace, right? Peace, peace as in the beautiful song, the beautiful music, that comes once you have tuned yourself and you can't really tune anybody else. Like I, I was in band in high school, right? And every every single musician is in charge of tuning their own instrument, tuning themselves, right? You can't tune anybody else's instrument. You can't go up to somebody and like grab their instrument and like tune it for them. I mean, you could, but that's not typically what anybody does. You typically tune your own instrument. <laughs> somebody will play a note, right? Somebody will hit middle C and then everybody tunes to that. Everyone's in charge of tuning their own instrument, tuning their own selves, and then everyone can play together in harmony. So if you've been trying to achieve peace in your life, either inner peace, peace between you and someone else, peace between you and the collective, whatever, it's actually just focus on getting yourself in tune, right? Getting yourself in tune. Um, and how do you do that? You have to understand the sound of your own soul. What is your essence, your character? What does your soul sound like, right? And again, you're gonna have your own way of feeling into this, your own, own way of understanding this. This is really going really far inward and finding out like, who am I? <laughs> what does my soul feel like? Who, who, how am I meant to be? Who am I meant to be? Like, what, what am I, right? Um, and that's entirely unique to you. Just like every musician, every musician finds that their own instrument has its own quirks. When you pick up another, like I played bassoon, right, in high school. If I were to play my friend's bassoon, I wouldn't really know how to tune it because every instrument is unique and has its own quirks and everybody has to get used to tuning their own instrument. So same thing with yourself, right? The only person who really knows how to attune you to your own soul is you. And this is completely individual. So this is really going inward, finding out how to become yourself, how to tune yourself to your own soul. And once you do that, then you have the opportunity to play in harmony with others. And that is when you all have more experiences of peace in your life. So number four, that's what I got for you guys. All right, light code number five. You choose the laws of your universe by selecting the paradigm that activates the rules you prefer. Okay, I'm gonna read that one more time because this is a big one and it might not make sense right this second, but trust me, this will start to make sense. <laughs> so let me read this one more time for you. You choose the laws of your universe by selecting the paradigm that activates the rules you prefer. So <laughs> what do I mean by this, right? This blows everything out of the water. This blows everything out of the water. This is one of those moments, okay? I remember when I was in college, one of the first classes I took was like philosophy 101, critical thinking. I had this awesome professor. He had mutton chops and a tweed jacket with elbow patches. He was hilarious. And the first thing he said to us, a bunch of, you know, 18 year olds fresh out of high school, he said, take everything you thought you learned in high school and throw it out the window. I'm here to teach you how to think. <laughs> and I thought that was incredible because I was like, Yes, I'm ready for a completely new fresh start in how I view the universe and how I think. This is you guys right here. <laughs> so this is take everything you thought you know, take everything you think you know about how the universe works, take everything you've been told about universal laws, throw them all out the window, right? Because 
you you might have you almost certainly right almost everybody has certain assumptions about how the universe works about the laws of the universe and you know if you have a religious background or a specific spiritual tradition you've inherited different spiritual laws universal laws different rules of the universe from that tradition um even if you're super open-ended and out there and like on, on the spiritual cutting edge right you still probably most of you um read different channeled material um and different maybe maybe you do your own channeling right and you're i mean all of you do your own channeling whether you know it or not you're receiving your own messages from the higher dimensions and they tell you about different rules of the universe and all of that and so you're left with this bag of assumptions about how the universe works and here's the thing all of those rules and laws have potential to be true and really that they are true on some level so this isn't about right or wrong this isn't about deciding what laws are true and what rules are true and which aren't because essentially if if a being in the universe has created a rule, then that rule exists for the people participating in that game, right? This is like the rules of the game. Just like when we make a board game or a video game, there's a certain rules, or even just kids playing tag, right? You make up rules, and then a bunch of people decide to play the game, and then they play with those rules. But so you can essentially exist inside a bunch of rules, but that's only because you, you're you playing the game. You can always transcend the game. You can transcend the rule book. Just think of Monopoly, right? You know how every time you play Monopoly with new people, you're, you're all gonna argue about what the rules are. There is a book inside the Monopoly box that has the official rules, but almost nobody follows those exactly, right? Everybody edits the rules of the game. Everybody has house rules. Um, and of course, the rules are what makes the game fun. If you were to play Monopoly without any rules whatsoever, you couldn't even play the game. You would just have a bunch of stuff on the table and you wouldn't know what to do, right? It, there would be no fun, there'd be no game. So the rules make the game fun. So same thing with your reality, right? You're essentially following some kind of rule book. <laughs> um, but of course, you can change the rules, right? Just like, just like the Monopoly handbook, you can make your own house rules. You can decide to ignore some of those rules and go, no, 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 no. My family, my house, we always played it like this, right? These are my rules. Just like think of free parking and monopoly. Everyone's got different free parking rules and people get really heated about what is the proper way to do free parking, right? So anyway, you can begin that way. You can begin by deciding what rules you like and deciding what rules you just want to change because you're in charge of the game here. This is your house, your rules, your house rules. You decide what rules you want to play with. Or here's the thing, you can entirely transcend the rule book. You can entirely transcend the game entirely. You can stop playing Monopoly, right? Um, so any of the rules that you think of that the universe operates under, those are real, but only if you want them to be, only if you want to play the game. So if there are certain universal laws that make you chafe <laughs> right or that you go why does it have to be that way do i want to continue to exist in a universe where those are the laws if you truly are ready to transcend those laws we'll just do it paradigm right you can go through a paradigm shift where you essentially decide i'm going to go over here into this new reality where i'm going to play a different kind of game and I'm going to write the rules this time. You're going to create your own game. You're going to create your own version of Monopoly. You're going to go over there and just create entirely new rules. Because on the most ultimate level, think of, think of the most ultimate level of consciousness that you can imagine, right? You, you, the universal consciousness. Universal consciousness. Like, like the, the unity mind, right? The unity mind. Unity consciousness. The universal mind. All that is. Or maybe you just want to think of it in terms of the void, right? The void just full of the tiniest fragments of, the tiniest fractals, the tiniest fractals of consciousness. It's like a blank slate. It is like a sandbox with nothing that really exists. There are no rules. There are no laws. There are no structures. There are no morals. There are no ethics. <laughs> there is nothing but potential. Take yourself back to that void state. Put yourself in that sandbox mode. Put yourself in that state of pure potential, pure creation, and then decide what reality do I want to create myself from here? 
then you can look out at the universe and go, okay, those people over there, they have created these rules for their game. Those people over there, they have created these rules for their game. Do I want to take any cool ideas from those guys? Do I want to go play one of their games? Or do I want to just create my entirely new experience, my entirely new reality? So this, like, it's like I'm saying, this blows everything out of the water for you guys. Just take yourself to the state of zero, take yourself to the zero point field and know that from that place, you construct your own reality. You construct your own reality. You construct your own reality with the rules that you prefer, right? Any rule has the potential to be real, but you don't need to play that game. You can create your own game with your own rules, your own reality with your own universal laws. So huge, huge, massive activation for you guys. You will be spending some time, <laughs> some time, right? Integrating this, understanding this, moving through this. Just keep going with it. It, it will start to stabilize within you as you just keep taking yourself back to zero. Just keep taking yourself back to zero. Just keep taking yourself back to zero and then starting to create your reality from there. Do that as many times as it takes until you get used to the creation process. So number five, that's what I got for you guys. Good luck with that massive activation. Light code number six, what do we got for you guys? I align my heart, root, and crown with my higher generous spirit. Thank you for bringing lessons to me in new, enjoyable, and surprising ways. All right, so you guys are essentially opening up to a new level of receptivity where you don't know what's happening next, but you are sitting here and saying, I'm ready for the next level. I am ready for my new experience. I am ready for my new spiritual activation. I am ready for new life lessons. You guys have essentially just recently closed a, a pretty significant cycle in your life. You're getting ready for the new cycle. And it's like, you don't know what it is. You guys might be feeling like you're in this in-between kind of state. And this is a reminder that to move to the next level of experience, to the next phase of experience, to your next cycle in your journey, is just about opening up to it, right? If you're trying to decide what's next for you, if you're trying to decide, should I do this? Should I do that? I don't know what direction to go in. I don't know what to choose. At this point for you guys for right now, it's stop trying to decide, <laughs> stop trying to figure it out. Just get really, really receptive. If you want to repeat this affirmation to yourself, this is you telling the universe that you're just ready for whatever comes, right? You're opening up to the unknown. You're opening up to the unexpected. New life lessons in new, enjoyable, and surprising ways. And this is also affirming that, yes, you know, you're ready for new lessons, new learning experiences, new spiritual initiations, but you want them to be fun, enjoyable, and exciting, right? Maybe you guys have been through a period of learning through chaos and conflict, but know that that is closing out and keep affirming to yourself that now you grow through joy. Now you learn through fun and ecstasy and euphoria, right? It can, it can go that way. It can go that way. So you guys are really kind of like in the cocoon in this in between. And I don't have too much more to say about this one because this is actually just about you guys affirming to yourselves and to the universe that you're ready for the next phase, that you're ready, that you're ready, that you're ready to be ready. And you guys, you might be playing a bit of a waiting game, okay? You might be in this in-between state for a little while, but just know that as you will, you will feel the shift when it happens, you will feel the new initiation come in when it happens, and you will know the new lesson when it happens. But you're really dropping out of the mind and you're dropping out of control, okay? So this is just get really receptive, get really open and get kind of okay with things being a little uncertain, slow or kind of in between for a while and just know that as soon as the moment is right, things will start moving and grooving again. And right now, just keep affirming to yourself that you're ready, that you're ready and that you're open and that you're open to receive, right? That you're open to receive. So a big, 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 initiation actually this whole process itself actually is getting you to open up 
and just open up and getting open to ready to receive the unknown, right? And to flow into the unknown in a very, this is a very feminine process, a very yin oriented process, right? Uh, my hand just keeps going in circles here because you're just opening up your vortex. You guys in the past maybe have, were kind of closed off, kind of in a more controlling or fear-based or reactive mode. Now you're opening up, opening up, opening up to gentle, to gentleness and to flow, right? You're going to be flowing with whatever the river takes you. Light code number seven. What do we got for you guys? All right. Physical and non-physical energies must meet as lovers with a capital L. The union between the spiritual and the earthly opens up a new experience of embodied consciousness. <sighs> oh boy. <laughs> Okay, some of you have heard me talk about this before. This is really about you embodying more of your own higher self, more of your own consciousness in your body. But no, the, but there's this, so that's the short answer. That's like the short explanation here. But there's so much more to this because this is actually helping you rejigger, <laughs> if you will, re-evaluate your perspective on what your higher self is or what the like higher cosmic energies is. So yeah, some of you have probably heard me talk about this before. So if this is coming up for you again, just know that this is another loop on the spiral, right? And this is kind of solidifying it for you. If this is new to you, then well, welcome to the beginning of this process because it, it spirals out, right? This will, this will repeat for you. So to, to start my explanation here, let me just point out that, you know, a lot of our like religious traditions on earth at this time have this language of talking about the spirit realm like the non-physical energies that they're like a parent right that the the different creator beings that they are the parents and we the little humans we're like these children right it's this very per, like parent and child type of relationship between like and, and there's always all of this language the spiritual language about like the non-physical energies know better that they are older and better and wiser and stronger and we are just these small little children that are going to return to our parents <laughs> and I mean that is absolutely a valid perspective it is real and it has been important for humanity to go through that process and that is an important aspect of everything right it's not like that is wrong or false it is true and it is real and it is important but it is only one aspect of this right <laughs> only one aspect of this and so if you have had that kind of perspective in the past this is where things start to shift because this also keeps us locked in this hierarchical conversation and this hierarchical like power struggle with the universe with higher realms with your own higher self and with whatever kind of divine creator beings you resonate with right so now we're actually going to turn things we're going to get rid of the hierarchy we're going to get rid of this parent child type of hierarchical vertical space we're going to turn it on its side and now we're talking side by side right where you over here right now right now my left hand is you your human self and my right hand is your higher self. My left hand is, is your human self and my right hand is the universe. And guess what? These energies, or I could also say the physical and the non-physical. And right now, these energies are meeting as equals, meeting as lovers, right? Lovers with a capital L. Think of the lover's card in the tarot, right? Meeting as lovers. And this was this is when you realize that you and your higher self it's your higher self is not better than your human self. Your, you and your higher self, two halves of one whole. You and your higher self are lovers. This is when people talk about the vertical twin flame, how you and your higher self are twin flames or two halves of one whole. And this, you take to take this even larger, you, even your, what you, what you might think of as your little old human self and the entire cosmos, the entire multiverse, however you perceive the whole universe are equals. You and the universe itself are equals. You and the universe itself can meet as lovers. You can make love, literally or figuratively, with the universe. To meet as lovers. To know that the universe itself is your other half. 
And this, <laughs> as you can see, is an entirely different perspective between parent and child. No, equals, equals. Meeting as lovers, right? With you in the universe. And to know that this is the same thing Every every human is having the same experience, has the potential to open up to this experience. This, this is like, this is a, a view, a, a state of consciousness. This is a state of consciousness that you can tune into. And it changes everything. Because when you wake up one morning and realize that you in the universe, or you in your higher self, or you in the creator, however you want to look at this, right? When you When you wake up and you realize that you and your higher self are equals truly equals, then you realize, oh, it's not just all about me learning and pulling down spiritual energy and like trying to improve myself and trying to reach my higher self and trying to ascend. No, it's actually an equal give and take process. Your higher self is learning from you and you are transmitting information. You are transmitting sensory information into the non-physical world. And so, of course, we talk a lot about bringing spiritual data, spiritual light codes, spiritual, all, you know, all of that spiritual energy, bringing it down to earth. We are equally, at least we have the potential to, right? Not all humans are doing this to their full capacity, but we are all learning about this and we are opening back up to this and we are remembering that we are actually here to equally send the physical, the sensory data to send that up because Yes, down here in the physical, right? Now I'm going to use the hierarchical language just because that is convenient and you guys will know what I mean, right? But of course, the hierarchical language is just an accident of English. <laughs> so, right, we're bringing the spiritual energy down, but we're also bringing it up because down here in the earth realm, we crave and we need the spiritual energy, the spiritual light, right? But you know what? Up there in this, in the non-physical, up there in the spirit realm, they crave and need and desire sensory physical experiences right they are learning about what it means to be in a human body in a physical body because think about it you are both right you are both you are your soul your consciousness your non-physical self and here you are in your human body you are a physical physical tangible real being right so, um, if it helps some of you, if you're into astrology, you can think of this in terms of Scorpio, the non-physical, the hidden, the secret, the cosmic, and Taurus, right? The physical, the grounded, the earthly. You can think about it in terms of that axis if that is useful to you. Um, and so this is an equal give and take, an equal learning, an equal merging. And when you merge the two together, fully, 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 right? Because our human experience, at least to me, right? I have had, had this experience of being a consciousness and, ha and having a physical body, but I don't always feel like they're fully interacting. Like that, I don't always feel that my consciousness and my body have fully met as lovers, right? They're kind of two separate things still. I have my consciousness and I have my body and I have been struggling most of my life to get them to understand each other, to get them to communicate, to get them to harmonize and interact. So this is a really big deal because when the time you pull this card, your consciousness and your physical body are getting it on. They're figuring it out. And to me, this is really what ascension is about, right? This is really, really, really what ascension is about when your consciousness and your physical body merge on a whole new level. When your higher self, your full self, your whole self, I would actually prefer the phrase whole self in this context to higher self. When your whole self is in your physical body, and your physical body and your whole self are in perfect communion, are in perfect oneness. I don't fully understand what that what that will be like because I haven't fully experienced it yet, but sometimes I get glimpses, right? That's what you're going towards, a new level of oneness between physical self and consciousness. And yeah, so huge, huge activation for you guys. That's all I have to say about this. Of course, I could talk about this a lot more but you will have your own unique experiences of navigating this, of understanding this, of working through this. And just know that at this time, you can absolutely trust your intuition, guys. Go with whatever is coming through for you. Light code number eight. What do we got for you guys? <laughs> okay, it is safe for you to let go and ignite. 
let go and ignite with capital letters because that's how much I feel about this, right? Let go and ignite, okay? This is <laughs> whatever is holding you back, whatever thoughts inside your heads, whatever opinions of others, whatever fears, drop it all. Drop it all. All of that bullshit, that is like just sandbags and anchors holding you down. Drop it all. It is safe for you to ignite, okay? It is safe for you. So you guys are consciously or not, maybe it's consciously, maybe it's unconsciously working through fears in past from past lives. I mean, also in this life, but really for you guys, it's past lives largely, right? Where you had so many past lives where you were beaten down because you were so bright, right? You, you, were, you had so many experiences of learning that when you shine your light, when you fully ignite, when you fully ignite your consciousness, it's not safe, right? You learned that it was not safe to be yourself. You learned that it was not safe to be a bright light. So you learned to dim yourself. You learned to control yourself. You learned to repress yourself. That shit is done. You're done with that phase. You're done with that. That is in the past. That was then and this is now. You might have to tell yourself that. That was then and this is now. That was then and this is now. Now it is safe. It is safe for you to let go and ignite. So just keep in mind that if sometimes you fear the ignition process, if you fear really shining your light, if you fear really stepping up and being who you are, who you really are, those fears are from the past and they no longer apply right? They no longer apply. It is safe for you. This is, <laughs> this is your confirmation, okay? This is from the universe. It is safe for you to let go and ignite. And ignite is like igniting your soul, right? And this, when you ignite your soul, you ignite your life. You ignite your life. What do you want out of life? What will it feel like to be living your best life? What will it feel like to be living your life to your fullest? What, is that, what does that feel like to you? Don't even worry about what that looks like. It's not really, it doesn't really matter about what you're doing, what kind of job you have, how much money you have, what kind of people you know. Really, it's about the feeling of your soul, right? The feeling of your soul igniting in your life and waking up every morning feeling like a bright, shining star, knowing that you are here blazing like the sun, right? Blazing, blazing, blazing like the sun. It is safe for you to let go and ignite. So you guys are dropping out of fears, dropping out of trauma and out of baggage and letting all that shit go and here to be a blazing, blazing bright light, right? Just for you, for you. Of course, when you blaze your light brightly, of course you assist others, you are of service to others, but that's not even what this is about. <laughs> this is about you living your best life, you shining your light as bright as you possibly can and feeling fucking amazing about it, rock and roll every day, all the time, guys. I love it. I love it. I love it. I got nothing else to add for this one. This is just let go and ignite, guys. Let go and ignite. Light code number nine. Last but certainly not least, let's find out what this is. <laughs> My life is a reason to be alive. Got lots of green going on here, guys. This is heart chakra healing. Man, with this card coming up for you guys, maybe you have really struggled. Maybe you're coming out of dark night at soul. Maybe you've been struggling with mental illness, depression, or just really a lot of life challenges and hard times, right? You have been clearing out your heart chakra and that work is coming to a close for now. And now you wake up in the morning and you go, what is really most important? What is most important to you? What is really, really important? I feel like you have recently gone through many challenges where you had to realize, oh, that thing I thought was so important wasn't actually important. It wasn't actually, I just, I thought it was, I thought it was because I was taught to think that was important or because society says that's important or because I had some kind of neurotic fear that made me compelled to think that is important, but all that's done now. All that's done now. Now you now you know what is really important in your life. Now you know maybe that you can sit on a park bench with nothing, right? You don't need anything. You don't need anything but the air you're breathing, right? And the soul shining inside of you. Your life is a reason to be alive. Your life is a reason to be alive. You don't need anything else than that. You don't need anything else. You just need your soul. You just need yourself. And from that place, you continue to build up the life that you desire around you, right? From that place, it's like 
I feel like there might be a little bit of a fear here where you go, if I accept where I am now, then I accept that I will always be here. If you're in kind of a, you know, less than ideal situation in your physical human life, um, I, I feel like somebody at least is really resisting accepting where they are, right? It's okay to accept where you are because your life is a reason to be alive. It doesn't matter where you're at right now in life. Your life right now as it is, is a reason to be alive. And accept where you are and wherever you are is okay. And I mean, that really, wherever you are, <laughs> whatever's going on in your life, it is okay and you can accept that. And as you, ex it's like first you really need to accept where you are right now in terms of your relationships, in terms of your money, in terms of your career, in terms of your spiritual journey, doesn't matter. Accept where you are right now. Somebody really needs to do that. That is a very significant message here. Accept where you are right now, really accept it. Really, really look at it. This is okay, I, I can accept this. Yes, this I might not like it. Yes, this might be less than ideal. Yes, maybe I have faced injustice. Yes, may, maybe there are all of these things that I don't like, but it is okay, I'm here. I'm alive, I am breathing, and my life is a reason to be alive. My life is a reason to be alive, no matter what. No matter what, my life is a reason to be alive. And from that place of acceptance, it's the accepting. Once you accept where you are, then you can start working on change. Then you can start building up your life. Then you can start moving and grooving and changing and shifting. And I feel like somebody really needs to hear that your problems are temporary. No matter how big your problems are, even if you feel like you're at absolutely rock bottom, that is a temporary experience. And even at rock bottom, your life is a reason to be alive, right? Even at rock bottom, your life is a reason to be alive. Accept where you're at and then just set about the business of building the change you want to see in your life one small step at a time. Even if it takes 10 years to, to, really, to really make significant change in your life, what does that matter? What does that matter? You're here, you're breathing one breath at a time, the 10 years will pass and you will, then you can find yourself in a whole new reality, a whole new life. Every step of the way, guys, it doesn't matter where you are, what's going on with you. Your life is a reason to be alive. Like print this on your forehead, right? get this into your head. Somebody really needs to, to know this. Somebody really needs to remember this, that your life is a reason to be alive, no matter what, no matter what, no matter what. Keep breathing, guys. Keep putting one foot in front of the other. Keep building up to change. And it really strikes me that you guys are number nine. Nine is the, and I, it's interesting, right? That I did nine instead of 10. I was like, no, it, it was supposed to be nine. It was supposed to be nine cards for this reading. Number nine is the final phase. After number nine, it, you click back to one, right? Because 10 is actually just one. <laughs> you click back into one. So you guys are really nearing the end of some type of, journey to some type of experience, some type of paradigm. Soon you're going to click back over to like that refreshed state of number one, like the, the energy of number one. So whatever's going on, it's temporary. You're nearing the end of this journey. Things will shift in your future. You will create positive change in your future and your life is a reason to be alive. I'm going to say that three times. <laughs> you're welcome to say this with me if you would like. My life is a reason to be alive. My life is a reason to be alive. My life is a reason to be alive. I love you guys so much. Sending you so much love and light. Bye.